Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of the Boost Your Biology podcast. Today, I'm joined in with two very special guests. Joining me in all the way from the US, uh, we have Rachel and Katie. And we only just connected. I only just reached out to Katie about probably two, three weeks ago as I stumbled upon her uh, really amazing YouTube channel, which has actually inspired me quite a lot with my own channel with some of the the content, things like that. So, and Rachel obviously is um, close friends with Katie and they do some some cool biohacking content together. So Katie and Rachel, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Lucas. Thank you so much. And just as a one point of clarification, because I know um, just for listeners, Rachel's actually based in Canada. Ah. And sadly, we haven't met yet because of everything going on in the world, but we started a podcast called Beauty and the Biohacker while everything was happening. And so we've actually been virtual friends for like almost a year now. Yeah. <laughs> we get to record, we just get story. to hang out. <laughs> yeah, we, we basically have just used the podcast as more of an excuse to hang out and talk to really fun people. And so we're thrilled to be here. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fun. So Rachel, maybe do you want to give my audience a bit of a background into, yeah, I guess what you do on a day-to-day basis? Sure. Well, my credentials, uh, that's very important. I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. So I have my bachelor's of science in nursing, and then I've undergone specific board certification in the area of anti-aging rejuvenation. I'm an international clinical trainer from UK across USA, Canada, And I'm also executive board member for Plastic Surgical Nursing Journal, peer reviewer. I write academic articles. So I am kind of in the know of the latest and greatest as it happens in regards to skin health, rejuvenation, optimization. And then Katie has just really opened my eyes up and also, you know, good friend of mine, Dave Asprey in the space of biohacking and how that interplays with radiance and getting great skin really from the inside out. So I cover all things kind of body, mind, spirit, energy as well, because that's what I've determined to be a key part in beauty and radiance is, you know, the the energetics and all of that uh, with nearly 10 years in the industry and 20,000 procedures later working with clients. Wow. Amazing. And so how did you meet Katie again? Katie heard me on Bulletproof Radio and Katie reached out and started asking me all these questions. I'm like, hey, why don't I just bring you on my show? Because I have another podcast, Rachel Varga podcast. And I was like, wait a second. This woman is asking me the best questions I've ever been asked. And I've worked with, you know, names of Dave Asprey, JJ Virgin, some of the top health and wellness icons out there. I'm like, okay, we got to, we got to partner up. And I just like hanging out with you. So a fabulous. Uh, <laughs> it was like 10 months later. And I finally like revealed her. I was like, by the way, like I have a background in journalism. So maybe that's, that's kind of the impetus. And so it was like, oh, well, why have you been holding that secret? Yes. And so, um, so I've kind of like finally embraced my journalistic background background you know it was it was a little shameful for a while and you know we've actually talked about this on beauty and the biohacker but you know I, I went through some dark times as a you know man on the street reporter reporting on stories that didn't fill me up just were really down really scary and and heartbreaking um and so it was an exhausting job and I kind of put that past beside me because I was like I just you know you sort of sometimes repress those things and you're like I don't want to deal with that but the journalist skills that were instilled in me have started to come out. And that is really where I've been able to kind of utilize that to my advantage by having a much more, you know, kind of journalistic outlook on how to, you know, investigate and look at products and specifically biohacking products for my Mm. channel. Because I think that, you know, one of the, the key factors that's missing with a lot of reviews is that people are just reviewing products very anecdotally. They don't take a look at the science. They don't do their research or their homework. And I'm like, over here, like, oh, this is a problem. Like people need to be educated before they make these huge purchases, you know? Mm -hmm. So I take a more, you know, scrupulous journalistic eye at everything I touch and it takes me weeks to do it. But like, I feel like my end result is transparency and consistency with my content. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely evident. And that's definitely the the first thing that piqued my interest when I when I stumbled across your channel was just how um, in depth and also just how professional your reviews are. Like they just, I was just like, this is too good. Like I, I gotta I gotta tell my audience more about you and and specifically the fact that you're diving into a lot of the products that 
have always been like on my radar. Like for example, the aura ring and the the chili pad and things like that. <laughs> We've all got one. Um, so yeah, so maybe do you want to share like how did you? What was I guess like the very first bar hack or something that like you you know transitioned into this? Well, this, this is actually so fitting because I'm coming up on my like three year anniversary of, and it all started with a podcast. I was in Berkeley with my fiance. I was just starting a new job and I was listening to James Altucher interview Dave Asprey before Dave Asprey was like huge. And I had never really heard of him in that podcast. He started talking about how he got smarter, how he fired up his brain again. And he started talking about things like racetams, which I know we can deep dive deep into, which I thought was like the craziest thing in the world when I first heard about it. I was like, oh, racetam, can we buy this? Is this legal? Like it was so fringe, but I was like, okay, this is, this is the key. And so after hearing Dave, I went on this like crazy rabbit hole down, you know, changing my diet, incorporating bulletproof coffee, starting to look at fat as healthy, starting to get sunlight. Like it all started to kind of just cluster together as I started to open my eyes and my mind to taking on these kind of new ways of looking at taking care of your health. Because mm. for years, like I've been part of the traditional medical system and it's great for like acute problems, but when it comes to bigger things and you're turning 30 and you're like, why do I have brain fog? I shouldn't be losing my memory like this. And it was in the kind of discovery three years ago of, of what Dave was talking about and then what all of his other predecessors were talking about. I started to really feel better. And then I was like, I can't keep this secret to myself. That's not fair. And so that is essentially kind of why I wanted to create a channel to share this information, to educate other people. Cause I was like, this is too good. Like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Yeah. Uh, so many similarities there just with myself. Like one of the things that um, I found when I was like, you know, doing a lot of research and things like that. I'm like, if I find something good, I've literally got a sticky note on my desk here that says, um, if you're feeling good, help others feel good as well. Like that's honestly one of the things that I live by. Um, and it's just, it, it's it, what's crazy about that is it, it, when you have that mindset and when you're thinking in that manner, you, your well being actually multiplies more than when you, like, for example, when you give, you feel better than the person receiving. So it's like, it's a weird, like, I know it's a weird phenomenon, but um, yeah, that's really interesting. Rachel, what about yourself? How did you get into, um, you know, obviously like the beauty therapy and um, and biohacking as well? Mm -hmm. This is a, this is going to be a neat story that I actually haven't shared before. So when I was about twenty five, I was noticing some fine lines, wrinkles pop up. So okay, let's do something about this. At this point, I was I'd finished my bachelor's of science in nursing, and I was actually considering going to medical school. So I was doing my med school prereqs. And I just felt like my pre post information at the clinic I went to wasn't great. And so I was like, okay, how can I change this and also get experience in a medical office? So for the last 10 years, I've worked with a highly specialized oculoplastic surgeon. I've worked with technologies, lasers that are, you know, they cost about $140,000 pieces of machinery here that I've learned to take apart and maintain and utilize to address things like redness, brown spots, uh, you know, promoting collagen. So I use some really cool pieces of like big tech. So people come see me and I kind of biohack their faces. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course I got to know Dave Asprey, who's the father of biohacking. And he kind of spurred me down this, this journey. But what I started to identify was a subset of my clients were doing really well. So I was starting to observe what radiance was. And these are in clients who are 60 and up and they have body, mind, spirit, energy practices dialed in. They have learned how to cultivate this. And then what I started to notice was uh, with some of my online work with a lot of clients from all over the place, primarily US, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, was the biohackers that I was meeting with. They were very dialed in to their routine and they were coming to me because they felt really good on the inside, but they wanted to tweak some things on the outside as well. So I started to see this correlation of high functioning individuals that also want to look great too. And then that also spurred, you know, knowing the godfather of biohacking, 
started to do some things myself, red light therapy, aura ring. To be honest, my hubby's a pro athlete. We were using red light therapy before anybody really knew about it so that he could recover quickly. And of course I got to reap the benefits, but yeah, being able to smash beauty and biohacking together has been a really cool journey. And especially for myself, figuring out what we can do at home as opposed to just relying on going into the clinic for treatments, like what we can, what can we do at home to optimize our body, mind, spirit, energy. And when everything's functioning better, as you guys know, from biological perspective, there's going to be fewer toxins that are going to be able to accumulate and thus a uh, higher level of beauty and radiance can, can then be achieved. So that's kind of why I'm here is to help people learn how to cultivate that and use some sweet tech in the process. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's sort of expand upon some of the things that people can do at home without, you know, exploring some of these hardcore technologies and things like that. So do you want to yeah, delve into some things that people can do to basically just improve and revitalize their skin health? Certainly. There are a couple of basics that I've identified that people can really just capitalize on right away at home. And that's your basics, including cleansing, moisturizing, sun protection, and exfoliation a couple of times a week. And when you work with clients for almost 10 years, thousands of clients, you see some common threads. Okay, if people aren't cleansing twice a day or they're just using like water, micellular water, there's an accumulation of dirt, oil, debris, dead skin, pollution, cosmetic creams that is actually creating more irritation on the skin. And then I started to look at moisturizers as almost like the antioxidants and the supplements for the skin, but you have to be very careful to make sure you're using moisturizers and products with with medical grade ingredients, really good formulations that when you're putting things like peptides and hyaluronic acid and growth factors on the skin and retinol, it's actually making its way into the skin cell to then create the cascade of let's reduce some inflammation or let's make some more collagen and elastin. Of course, sunscreen is super key, mineral-based sunscreen, reef-safe sunscreen and exfoliating, but not using scrubs with plastic particles or like that you know, famous St. Ives apricot scrub that will actually create micro tears. Uh, there's a lot that goes into just dialing in a basic routine cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub. We could, you know, talk for hours on that alone, but that's kind of where you can start and then think about maybe like dermal rolling or using other actives on the skin a little bit later. And then there are certainly some things that can be done in the clinic, but when, when you just do that initial heavy lifting at home, that's really going to set the stage for prepping the skin so that when you do get treatments in the clinic, you're kind of maximizing your efforts, your time and money. It's all about what can we do to maximize our time and money, right? Yeah, of course. Now with, um, out of curiosity, I want to know, like, have you personally found a standalone oral supplement that's had, you know, really, really profound effect on skin health? Like I know obviously- Multiple. Yeah, it's, let's, let's explore some yeah. of those ingredients. I'm curious to know what you found. Yeah. So obviously I'm not going to mention brands specifically because I'm not paid to talk about them and all that stuff, but I have actually identified one product line that comes out of France that has utilized superoxide dismutase, which has been sourced from French melons. And this has actually been quite profound that if you've ever heard the word inflammaging, that has been coined by Francois Vix who is the creator and founder of Glycidin Skin Nutrients. It is touted as one of the top nutraceuticals for hair, skin, and nails at reducing skin inflammation. I personally will take certain supplements so that I can go outside in the sun and not burn as easily, right? It's like sunscreen antioxidant protection from the inside out. And then there's other ones that uh, one of them in particular collagen I like to work with right now, it has Health Canada approval for also reducing inflammation in the skin. And this is huge when certain regulatory bodies actually allow these kinds of statements to be made. And those can only be made if there's research to support those claims. So Katie and I love, we actually did our last episode on Beauty and the Biohacker, all all about conscious consumerism. So, you know, we, I look, I, I look at these research articles and don't be daunted at looking at the research. In fact, in fact, you should, you should look at those types of sources for your information, as opposed to just articles that you'll find on blogs, but like actually the research papers. And if you Google my name on PubMed, whatever, or search my name on PubMed, Rachel Varga, you'll find uh, two of my papers that I have out. Awesome. Yeah. I might have to, um, 
after this after this video, I'll probably be diving deep into that and, and end up end up sharing some of those research papers on my on my YouTube because yeah, there's some it's it's interesting that you said there was like a nutraceutical from was it uh, bit what bitter melon or no different. It's from a specific melon that's grown in France. So if you think of wine, right, the French really put a huge emphasis on making sure that things are as clean as possible, right, yeah. to protect. They don't want to incorporate GMOs, pesticides, all that. So they actually already have really great growing practices. I have a, a wonderful interview with Francois Vix on the show, and that's a really great place to kind of just get that information on nutraceuticals and how they're really changing the world of skin aging straight mm. from the CEO and founder himself. And there's a couple of really good companies that are starting to pop up that are taking the time to do the research and development. Wow. Amazing. Katie, what about your experience? How have you, um, just with skin health, like what have you experimented with in the past? Yeah. Uh, before I dive into that, I just want to like make one really nerdy thing about wine because before I was a YouTube host, I actually uh, was in the wine industry doing events and I got my certification and everything. So like, I totally went down that road of just being like nerding out. And there's in France um, and, you know, pretty much across the globe, there's this thing called terroir, which in wine culture and, and kind of the, the wine nomenclature really means, you know, this, this kind of idea of do, you know, having land really dictate, you know, the quality and the t different tastes that you get in a, in a wine. So your the terroir of, say, New Zealand, a Sauvignon Blanc is going to be so different from California because of the way that, you know, the climate is and the different soil that they use and the water. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, to Rachel's point, there is so much value in really kind of knowing the farming practices, knowing the terrain and all of those things that go into these chemicals that you know, ultimately make up your um, skincare routine. So yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. huge. Um, and we talk about like manufacturing practices at another point, but that is like a whole other rabbit hole. Um, for me, skincare health, like I, I took terrible care of my skin for so many years. I had, I still have actually red acne marks that I have been trying through derma rolling and some red light therapy to actually tame. They're not terrible, but you know, it still reminds me of like, those times when I just was eating all the wrong foods and my hormones were out of whack and everything, you know, it's, it's natural. There's a laser for that, Katie. <laughs> I know, but I just can't get my way into a clinic right now. Um, so I got to stick to that home stuff, but, but yeah, so what Rachel has turned me on to is, is this idea of medical grade skincare, because I'm your classic, like, oh, I'm just going to go into Sephora or some big box store and I'm just going to buy, you know, the, probably the, you know, middle of the road price beautiful packaging and, and looks kind of clean. And maybe a friend has recommended it. That was my mentality about skincare. And then Rachel's like, oh, honey, you've got to really start to look at the research behind these things. You really have to understand, like, if you yeah. can't read the chemicals or, or what, what's on the label, like, you shouldn't be putting that on your skin because your skin's your largest organ. You wouldn't eat that stuff. Why would you put it on your skin? And so over time, you know, I obviously, um, you know, I, I definitely burn easily. And so that's something that I've been really monitoring with, with, you know, having, uh, you know, a, a certain type of tinted mineral sunscreen that I use every day. And the crazy thing, and this is probably one of the like biggest, you know, um, like sources of wisdom that Rachel has presented is our blue light from our phones are actually, Rachel, you could probably speak to this more elegantly than me, but like the blue light from our devices is actually going to be penetrating our skin at a much deeper level than even UV rays. And if you think about how much you're interacting with your phone, that's pretty scary. Rachel, please like tell us more about that. I'm, I'm, I'm quite shocked that I don't, I didn't know that blue light could affect skin. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I heard about it was at a conference in Toronto. I think it was probably about three years ago, to be honest. So this has started to be investigated a little bit more over the last couple of years, obviously with the uh, heightened and accelerated use of technology, which technology can be fantastic. But as you guys know, in the space of blue light and EMFs, they can also create distortions and disturbances in our body, mind, spirit, energy alignments and regulations and all of that. So a lot of times I'll meet with clients and they say, oh, you know, I don't really think I need to wear sunscreen every day. I'm kind of just working from home or I'm only going from house to the office or to the shops. It's a quick little 15 minute commute. Honestly, it's that 
that kind of cumulative impact of exposure to UVB, which is on the sunny days, UVA, which is on the cloudy rainy days, but it's the blue light really that's kind of the kicker right now. And we're understanding more and more the issues with blue light actually interfering with the uh, with our eyes. So the contacts I have on actually have built-in filters. Uh, some of the tech around contacts is definitely getting better. Same with some of the eyewear classes and uh, the, the built-in filtering there is great. Obviously Dave Asprey knows all about that world and has really uh, probably brought that to the forefront of our minds more than anybody else that I've ever seen talk about. So kudos to him yeah. for kind of understanding that early on. But yes, blue light from our devices is certainly something we're noticing uh, creating more accelerated aging, not to mention tech neck, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's a lot involved for sure. And it's hard because it's like, you know, you want to be social, you want to be able to convey your message, convey your information online. It's a great platform. But yes, there are some of these repercussions that we just have to be smart about, right? Like it's just mm. about creating this sense of mindfulness and awareness around using those products. So don't not use them, just use them more strategically. Yeah, of course. My um, All of my tech devices, they never know it's daytime. It's just always in, it's always in night mode. Like always permanently, just, just, I'm just permanently looking at an orange screen. So it's so funny. I did that for a while too, until I started recording my phone using my camera. And then I realized that like, it looked awful. And I was like, I can't, <laughs> I was like, I got to change all this back. So I, I hear you. And it's so <laughs> funny. Cause I was like, damn it. Like I have to just like change it back to like full blue light. And then when you do, when you make that shift, oh. you're like, Whoa, was I looking at this screen before? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. <clears throat> Hmm. All right. Well, with the, um, let's sort of delve into a little bit more on, um, we'll go, we'll go deeper into maybe Katie, I want to, I want you to talk more about some of the, some of the products that you've re reviewed in the past mm -hmm. and, and what you've, what you've discovered along this journey. Cause I'm sure it's been quite exciting personally. Oh yeah. Um, Katie, why don't you use me as a little case study with the aura ring? Oh yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, um, I have obviously always been attracted to this idea of, you know, appealing to the masses and really getting, you know, spreading the word out there about these different products. But of late, I've also, you know, started to realize how important it is to do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people. Because when it comes to things like sleep, yes, I can give you some blanket advice that might appeal to everybody, you know, get out first thing in the morning, get some sunlight in your face, you know, start to decrease your natural production of melatonin you know, wear blue blocking glasses before night, all those good things. But then when it comes to like really analyzing your REM and your deep sleep, you need concrete data. And so the kind of the big umbrella here is like, you know, before you just start throwing everything under the kitchen sink at your sleep or your health or your nutrition, you first got to track. So my key like takeaway and staple in all of the products I review is you have to start with the foundation because if you don't have that then you it's you're just setting yourself up for disappointment because you're not going to know what actually worked it's hard to gauge so Rachel and I actually sat down and we did a consultation where I asked her what her sleep goals were you know and I asked her what her routine was like and and so we got really specific and really tailored and so ultimately I thought that the aura ring would be a great tool for her that's not necessarily what I recommend for everybody there's a lot of people who do not want the ring and they prefer some type of watch or they don't want something that you know is is you know a device at all like they, they just want, you know, like something on their, their night side table. And there's like a lights for that too, that can kind of, you know, um, mimic the sun exposure first thing in the morning by actually having your light wake you up. There's also the eight sleep mattress pad, which is not anything you wear, but something you actually sleep in. And that's kind of been my favorite biohack I've discovered in the past couple of months. It's a sleeping mattress pad that A, operates as a cooling mattress pad. So you can get in and set it to be warm and then you can drop it down when you're in your deepest state of sleep to be mm -hmm. cold so that you're actually gonna get, you know, that REM, get into your deep and REM state and then wake up with an, a vibration and a thermal alarm. And it does tracking. So it's like, there are just so many products out there that can help you achieve your goals, but 
first you've got to identify what those goals are. Mm. Um, so I have a lot of people reach out to me about nutrition. I don't really cover that because I, I feel like there's so many people who have nutrition degrees out there and I'm just not, you know, one to speak on that, but I will say getting a CGM device is uh -huh. a game changer. And I recommend that for almost anybody because really having a better understanding of what certain foods due to your blood sugar levels mm -hmm. can put into perspective for you how food is impacting you personally. There is nothing, nothing like the data that you get from yourself to know, oh my gosh, when I eat that, my, my you know, sugar levels spike. Like I can't eat sweet potatoes because my they go through the roof. Yeah. My we have a great yeah. interview. Yeah. We, we have a great talked, interview. We talked with um, Kara of uh, Nutrisense and they're, oh, yeah. you know, one of the kind of leading startups in this space right now. And, you know, she kind of has the same thing. She's like, you know, I can eat sweet potatoes, but I can't eat blueberries. And so it's really this whole one size fits all thing just doesn't exist anymore. Not yeah. for sleep, not for fitness, and certainly not for nutrition. And so when we can give people the tools that they need to actually uncover this stuff themselves, that's really when the game changing work begins. Mm. What about the, there was a probiotic, I think you said for, for blood sugar control. I love that company yeah. so much. It's called Pendulum Life. I'm actually um, partnering with them for a special discount code. So if you go to their website, you're going to get 25% uh, off your first subscription if you use the code Katie. And I make no money from that. That is me purely just looking for a way to support this business and a and B basically make this a little bit more affordable for people. Mm. I know what I know what they're going through behind the scenes. Like they're barely making money, mm. and they're putting so much time and labor and effort into cultivating these specific strains that actually target your butyrate levels so to help with your glucose regulation. And I have tried. I've been on the probiotic myself for like seven months, wow. and I have never ever experienced uh, a a much more st stable glucose, you know, regulation control when I look at my numbers than with this thing. So I firmly believe in it. And I just, I absolutely like cannot recommend it enough. Rachel, do you have any um, experiments with the CGM device? Like, did you ever do some experiments at all? Or Yeah, I'm actually one of those types of individuals that's super sensitive to everything. <laughs> Sounds, vibrations, electromagnetics, EMFs. I feel like I do have that kind of under control, but I am looking into investigating and kind of adding that next little step into my personal biohacking and how I can kind of stack things, which is really what I see a lot of people talking about is stacking their biohacking, which is that actually rhymed. And one thing I wanted to mention is that with all of these different kits that are available now and devices is that honestly the technology is getting more affordable than ever which I just think is brilliant and if I think of someone like my dear husband who's a six-time pro world champion kickboxer he very much is so incredibly in tune with his own body that when I talk to him about biohacking he's like oh that's like the that's like the shortcut way to do it but he is so incredibly in tune but I think it's just wonderful seeing this renaissance of tech and technology and ways to do things just to, you know, help elevate humanity. That's the long and short of it. Am I right guys? Yeah. yeah. Katie, I think you, you mentioned um, that, that term, the term biohacking, like let's sort of delve into that. Like, why is it such a <laughs> difficult one it, for it, people to, yeah. It's so stigmatized. I actually have stopped using it on my channel because I have found that it's so polarizing for whatever reason, I think, you know, the term itself is really about, you know, using your own data and uh, harnessing the power of your own biology to be able to make better, you know, changes and, um, and really see, start to see some differences in your body for longevity purposes and, and health purposes. So I, I, I do still like live and die by that term, but I don't use it per se. I kind of have started to stray away from that just because I think the perception right now is like you're a cyborg or kind of like what your your husband said, like you're shortcutting your way. It really like in the infancy of it got this reputation of like, you know, Tim Ferriss and kind of this like almost culture of like nootropics and psychedelics and things that you're using to change your fundamental human experience. 
And it is so much more than that. It is really about optimizing your human experience. It's not about changing yourself per se, you know, changing yourself for the better, but not like I'm going to become an AI robot. Like, I think that is something that's still, you know, there, it's a fine line to kind of tr- cross with my audience. And so I just use health and wellness because yeah. I think it has more of a mass appeal, but hopefully the, the, you know, the sea change will happen and people will become a little bit more comfortable using that term. But for right now, it's, you know, just a little limiting. Yeah. I think I'd love to add a layer to this. Yeah. Yeah. So I interviewed uh, JJ Virgin. She is like the health and wellness icon out there. She brought like personal training and nutrition on the map as like a business writing books on it, JJ Virgin cookbook and all that stuff. And she said something in an interview with me. She said, I hate the word authentic when people have to tell me that they're being authentic, right? I get it. I get it. So the the thing that I see about all this health optimization is that when we just give our body, mind, spirit, energy, the tools it needs to reduce toxins and just help to equalize and balance everything, balance our hormones, all of that good stuff, we are actually going to be presenting to the world our most truest version of ourselves, like feeling our best, looking our best, being able to do the work that we're, you know, some of us are here to do, do our life's work, do this mission of being a human and how we can impact the world. And I think we're going to be able to be better at, you know, being humans and entrepreneurs. If we put this layer of optimization on, there's no question in my mind, this is the way of the the future of health. Yeah. yeah. 100%. The other parts of that is I feel like a lot of the biohacks that we do, they're just making up for what we once did in the past. Like, Mm -hmm. or we're just, we're just counteracting what's like, I look at it as like, um, there's like the allostatic load principle. It's like, you know, uh, toxin input versus what are we doing to get the negative energy or toxins out? Basically all the biohacks that we're doing is just, we're basically just trying to cleanse the body from all of the negative environmental stresses that we're, we're, we're facing. So that, the unfortunate reality is when people Google image search like biohacking, that cyborg stuff and all that like mm-hmm. crazy transformative stuff comes up. But hopefully in a couple of years from now, it's going to be Katie, Rachel, myself popping up on the Google images. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's like this is part of the work, right? Like we put a name to the face and and really kind of like what I talk about on my channel, it's not about the device, guys. It's never been about the device. It's not about the term. It's not... I'm a biohacker, you know, like, no, you're taking really damn good care of your health. That's what you're doing. And you're so excited about it that you want to share it with everybody else. Who cares what you label it as? Like, you just keep doing what you're doing, you know, like, I, I don't even take the time to stop and think about it anymore. Cause I'm like, I'm too busy. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's funny. Cause I, I just finished the podcast this morning with Ryan Smith from TaylorMade Compounding. Oh, yeah. awesome. um, we're, we're going through my epigenetic report with um, true diagnostic. Um, and he was actually blown away. Like I think my white blood cell markers were like the best top 99. I'm in the 1% one percentile for like something ridiculous. Um, wow. And what's your biological age? I'm, you know, not that we're, you know, comparing numbers or anything. <laughs> well, <laughs> Funnily enough, it was actually my age. So it's 24.1. And I'm Oh my God, you're 24. Oh my <laughs> God. That's amazing. <laughs> I That's was amazing. gonna tell you, I was gonna tell you my age, but we're just gonna skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's uh, awesome but- though. That like to have it match up like that is really yeah. impressive. And it's you're clearly doing all the work, you know, and and, you know, it's, it really is just all about, you know, to Ra- what Rachel said, like taking care of the bo- body and the mind and doing like the meditation and the yoga and the, you know, the movement practice too, because that's, that's a lot of what this is about too. Yeah. One thing we tend to forget about is that the skin is actually our largest organ. This is why a lot of times when I work with biohackers, they do actually have better skin, right? It's, it's people that take the time to care for themselves. So I look forward to kind of the future of at home 
skin health optimization through biohacking tools. And there are some really cool things that are coming out, but there's also so many gadgets and, you know, garbage things that are actually not going to be great for the general population, but everyone's getting them. So I tend to, you, you can take this run with this as well, but I have what's called a bit of a seven, eight year rule. I won't use technologies in a clinical setting, lasers, new injectables, new ways of doing things. If they haven't really been sussed out on the general population, for that 70 year rule, honestly, I've seen things get launched in the space of rejuvenation and, and anti-aging and, you know, augmentations and stuff like that. So you, know, you do want to be conservative, but at the same time, not shoot yourself in the foot for innovation. So it's kind of this, mm-hmm. this fine line. It's interesting. Rachel, just out of curiosity, what sort of, um, what sort of devices or things like, or measuring practices can people utilize i know we can do blood test analysis things like that but how can we actually measure the quality of someone's skin well i mean first of all visually right yeah, yeah. how does the skin look is there redness is there diffuse redness is there sign are there signs of inflammation also age spots or dark spots brown spots by the way this isn't medical advice everything we're sharing here is is for educational purposes only just got to say it uh, that can actually be, from my understanding, with the speaker that I've had on the show, can actually be a sign of issues with detoxification, right? So the skin tells us so much about what's happening. Also, if we're starting to see like a thinning of the skin, that loss of collagen and elastin typically happens with women initially from age 37 to 41. And then there's just this like 30% drop off of collagen when women enter the times of their life with menopause. So there's a study, and I share this on my social Rachel Varga official of a snapshot that actually looked at men and women's facial shape changes from the period of 50 to 60 and get this women's faces change shape three times faster than men's. So that's resulting in the loss of bone, the loss of collagen and elastin, the loss of fat. So when we're doing things like supplementing collagen, which I used to totally just knock it, I was like, oh, whatever, that's a gimmick. Mm -mm. I have a different, I can tell you that my skin has actually been the best it's ever been. And I'm doing less in clinic stuff to it with all of the stuff that I'm doing at home with skincare, rolling supplements, you know, different biohacking technologies, but we do age differently. So if you're looking in the mirror and you're like, all of a sudden you feel like your skin's getting thinner and more sagging, more drooping to the eyelids, that could actually be a sign of hormonal dysregulation. So, you know, loss of estrogen also resulting in loss of collagen. It's quite fascinating. Yeah, definitely. I had a crazy idea to do this year, but I haven't actually started it, but there's still time. I was actually going to do like a picture of myself every single day of the year without makeup, like first thing in the morning, just like a selfie and track it over the year and see if I see any big changes. I think that would be kind of like an interesting look because I've looked back at like old pictures on my phone from three years ago. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I look so different, but I, you know, in reality, I, I, still look pretty young for my age. So it's really, it's a hard thing to measure, Mm. but, um, but I think, you know, if you are paying attention to these cues and you're actually looking at certain things, you know, over a long period of time, then you're going to be able to start to see that shift happen. Yeah. Um, one thing that came up was, uh, I just thought of a good product idea. I don't know if it's, it may not be, it may not be anything fascinating, but, um, maybe like a, a specific probiotic bacteria that can upregulate like collagen production or like a specific Mm. probiotic that targets skin health i know we have a lot that target like eczema um, dermatitis and histamine but what about like an anti-aging probiotic that would be like really cool well actually just thrive has one we had them on our show they actually have an antioxidant with a prebiotic which i think is fantastic to put the two together but going back to your question before when you're asking me about the different pieces of technology to measure the skin. There's actually these literally, literally it's like a twistometer or something where it can actually twist the skin and measure the amount of collagen and elastin. There's also different tests that we can do on the skin to measure the humidity that one of the uh, founders of a neuromodulator that comes out of Germany, he was talking to me about this, of how, you know, different injectables can actually change the humidity on the skin. So you probably heard about things like GD, 
decrease your sweating and, and all and all of that. So there are some also there's another marker that we look at in the space of skin aging and you know product skincare development is actually being able to determine the amount of oxidative stress on the top of the skin, which is really cool. So they can measure oxidative stress and the impact of say using an antioxidant serum with vitamin C, hyaluronic acid peptides, and then the uh, reduced oxidative stress after using a product over a certain period of time. So this mm. stuff's getting pretty darn sophisticated. Mm. What's your um? What's your opinion on infrared sauna usage? Because I've I've got myself a uh, a clear light, you know, full spectrum, mm -hmm. mid year, far infrared. What's your What's your opinion or, or you know stance on that sort of modality? Sure. So I'll mention something that I found was really interesting. My hubby and I we had tons of forest fires, smoke around. It was terrible. We had the worst air quality on the planet at this time. And I just was like, oh, I want to do a detox. So we went to uh, where I get massages from infrared sauna and I stepped out halfway through our session and grabbed some water and I came back in and the whole sauna just reeked like smoke. So I love the idea of being able to utilize these pieces of technology that we can actually get at home. It's, it is getting more affordable, but you have to really watch the companies that you end up supporting. Um, based on my discussion with Sunlight and a very illuminating discussion is that a lot of saunas are actually made in the Orient. So the glues, uh, the materials that the sauna is made of, you could just think of the off-gassing. So you have to do your research and support companies that are creating products that they're actually researching the, you know, the human tissue recovery, inflammatory markers and things like that. There's a lot of good companies out there. Yeah. Katie, your experience with um, like red light therapy? Yeah. I mean, I have, I've been trying to dabble a little bit more in the kind of skin side of it. Um, I actually have a, a sunlight and product that I'm actively using that has very different like spectrums and wavelengths um, to target certain things. So, you know, one light is going to target, you know, um, muscle recovery, you know, if, if you're chewing a lot or some, you know, you do a lot of frowning, which sometimes I do. Um, and, uh, and then there's others that, you know, really go after blemishes and really kind of helping with some of the scarring tissue that you might have from, um, from acne. So I, you know, I haven't really like fully explored that world of the kind of cosmetic side of the red light, but I have used it to set my circadian rhythm. So, you know, when we, it's been beautiful here in California, but when we get those cloudy days and that fog rolls in, it's, I'm, I'm actually very impacted emotionally by that kind of weather. It, I, uh, you know, I don't have a sad light, but I take out my red light and I start putting it on myself and I just kind of shine it in my eyes. And that really helps to kind of, I, I mean, I guess it's helping I mean, maybe you can even speak to this, like with some of the neurotransmitters and just like helping restore some of that serotonin and by helping reduce that melatonin. And then I've also used it, um, on my body. If I have certain cramps or sorenesses. So after a run, if my left leg was starting to cramp up, I'll actually use red light therapy on that. And it's a combination of the light and a little bit of the, the off heat that comes from it that really helps soothe it. And so, you know, that's kind of been my experience with red light. Mm. Did you ever get into sun gazing at all? I, yes. And I'm actually in really into it right now. <laughs> it's uh, we've been so blessed with some sun. Um, we've had some really great days here. And I, I grew up in New York just as a kind of backstory. So I was used to like, you know, January through like April, it was dark and gray and it was really hard to find the sun. And then I move out to California and I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is like mecca of like sunlight so yeah every morning i actually we have a beautiful porch that we kind of retrofitted to essentially let us sit out there and get the sun into our eyes for about 10 15 minutes every morning that to me is almost equivalent to like a matcha tea i'm not going to say bulletproof coffee but like a matcha tea i feel energized and like ready to go it just starts to like wake me up in a way mm. that a cold shower doesn't even do, you know, yeah. it's just incredible. Rach. 
Yeah, I actually interviewed a triple board certified physician, Dr. Lisa Coach, on this topic, and she was she did a deep dive on the different pathways in the eyes that are activated from the light. So mm -hmm. some of the things that I'll do while I'm getting ready and I'm washing my face, I'm putting my skincare uh, products on, which honestly takes me like less than three minutes. It does not have to be this 365 step, but I will actually be looking outside or in my red light. I tend to use it definitely in the evening before bed. But if I'm feeling a little going to have a bath in the morning, I will use my red light therapy in the bathroom at the same time. Yeah. But what I like to stack with sun gazing is I love catching the sunsets and here in Canada, it's a little chilly. So I do like to get in the ocean for my cold water therapy. I'll go up to my jawline here for eight minutes. It sucks. Wow. And <laughs> it's a challenge, but then you just feel fantastic after. And yeah, I'll, I'll actually distract myself with watching the sun go down. Mm. Yeah. I actually did a, I did a post on my Instagram. I think it was a week or a week or two ago. Um, just warning people on the dangers of getting sun exposure behind windows and glasses. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a lot of people will wake up and they'll just, they might just get their notepad out or their laptop and they'll just be typing behind the sun coming through the window um, and how that can actually lower their vitamin D levels and actually contribute to um, skin damage and things like that. So for those listening in, if you're still doing that practice, um, you might want to reconsider or check out the post. Um, but yeah, what about in terms of exercise? I want to know, like, I want to sort of branch off into that because like movement, in my opinion, uh, I don't usually say this, but honestly, I think exercise from my perspective, has almost always out-trumped or outperformed a crappy diet. Like when it comes to um, body composition or well-being or things like that, like I can, generally speaking, I can, if I have a binge meal or if I go on a bit of like a crazy, you know, binge or whatever, I can somehow like outdo that negative effects. And with a lot of the um, uh, GDAs and metformin and some other supplements and things like that i can sort of offset the damage so katie do you want to share your experience with like exercise and movement yeah i mean i i was never an athlete growing up like my family forced me into doing ballet and irish step dancing and i hated it but as i've gotten older i have started experimenting with running i think i was probably in high school when i you know did a minor bit of running but as of late i now use this as a kind of like my you know, afternoon cup of coffee. If I need, like, if I'm in a terrible mood, my fiance is like, go for a run right now. Like it gets me into the flow state when I'm running. I just, everything sorts of like, if I, if, especially if I'm stuck on a, on a project, like if I can't, you know, figure out what I'm writing or what I'm, you know, if I'm just hard, having a hard time di getting dialed in, a run will clear my mind like nothing else. There is no drug, there is no food, there is no supplement that does, that gives me that high. And I come back and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I feel so much better. It is so instantaneous. The problem for me though, is I can overdo it, right? Like you just want more and more of that same feeling. So there are times in which I'll be running and then my body's like, you know what? Three miles was enough today, like just stop. And so I'm now getting much more intuitive about like, when I hit that threshold and when I'm like, you know what? It's a law of diminishing return. If I keep running, I'm actually going to tire myself out. I'm not going to feel that same like homeostasis that I was looking for. So really the trick for me has now been just mastering when the right time is to go for that run, when the right time is to stop that run, because I think the trick and the, the sweet spot is really making that connection. And that yeah. that's intuition that you just have to listen to yourself. Obviously, I also get out in nature as much as I can. Like I'm grounding in the mornings, I'm hiking. We have a beautiful hiking trail right behind our house. So it's like a perfect place to escape mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. But when I was, you know, living in New York, that was not always the same. We'd go to a shopping mall and walk around in like the fumigated, like, you know, department stores that it was just like toxic hell. And it's like, now it's just so nice to be able to kind of do some forest bathing right in the middle of the day outside my door. So I'm, I'm always moving around, getting up. I'm very antsy by nature in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, there's a, um, there's a stack you have to try out to um, increase the runner's high. Have you heard of the mm. runner? Like it's a well-known yes. 
it's How a well known phenomenon. Um, is it phenylparacetam? It's it's phenylalanine, so L phenylalanine, okay. the amino acid with mm -hmm. um, terastilbene from blueberry extract. Mm. Uh, and, and then uh, and then you can add in some maca as well, and then also olive leaf. I, I put together like a hypothetical stack on like how that would enhance the endocannabinoid signal signaling. Um, so that's one to yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you after our call. Yeah. Just a PS, I also experimented with some um, tyrosine before this call because I know that's what you did to shape up for Ben Greenfield. So I got I got myself a B6 folate L-tyrosine velvet bean and quercetin little stack going on over here. So I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, have you? Um, what's your relationship like with um, movement and exercise? Mm -hmm. If I don't move enough, I act, my body hurts, right? I'll feel it in my legs. I'll feel kind of tight. And lucky for me, my hubby's, like I said, he's, he's an athlete, he's a pro athlete. So what, if he's like, what, what's his name, by the way, I should know this. His name's Gabriel Varga and he's a six time pro world champion kickboxer. He's uh, held the titles for glory uh -huh. K one uh, right now. He's working with Bellator kickboxing and MMA. So if I'm not exercising enough, he'll get on, he'll get on my back. And if he's not doing his skincare enough, I'll get him on his front. <laughs> And um, yeah, for, for me, I live right next to a mountain. So I'll go up that up to the top, a beautiful view. Um, I'll put my feet on the ground in my yard here. We're on about 1.3 acres, kind of in like farmland. So we grow actually a lot of, a lot of food. My hubby's got a, a pretty cool ground, a green thumb, but I have to say one of my biggest EMF and skin hacks is actually getting about three hours on a cell phone reception. So Katie, when you come visit me, we're going to hop in my Jeep. I'm going to take you on the back roads. Yes, I see bears, cougars, all sorts of things. But getting into like bodies of water and getting away from sounds and other people's technology, I'll turn you know, Bluetooth off in my car. I'll turn my phone off completely. Same with whoever's with me. And just kind of experience all the vibes. It's like what you said before, Lucas, we've kind of fallen away of how we typically live. So for myself and actually CDC in early 2000s published on their website, I saw someone else mention this, that three to eight percent of the population was basically like severely sensitive to EMF. So imagine what percentage now that we understand this so much more. Uh, I literally have to go to pretty extreme levels to, to clear myself. But what I notice is when I do go in nature and have those types of experiences, my skin looks better. So whether I do have a theory on this and how grounding affects us. And uh, I had Tim Gray on the show and chatted with him and he kind of opened my eyes up to a website called Groundology, where they actually looked at slides of individuals, their, their red blood cells on this little slide and when they weren't grounded, the red blood cells were kind of uh, disorganized, right? So what that is, is um, basically an ionic dysregulation and disharmony between how the red blood cells are kind of aligning up, right? What are those connections like ionically? And then you look at the red cell slide of some an individual who is grounded and there's even spacing between the red blood cells. They're not stacked on top of one another. So I do actually have a theory and I, I'll figure out a way to test this and actually create a, an article on this on more organization of collagen and elastin when we are grounded, which will make our skin better. I can maybe help you with some of the testing stuff too. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I did some own tests. I did actually, have, I bought a Withings um, blood pressure monitor and I did some differences between, you know, grounding and what happened to my heart rate and my blood pressure versus being on my bio mat, which you can see right behind me if you're watching. And, and then just like sitting still and it, like time and time again, heart rate dropped, blood pressure like stabilized while grounding. And I can't help but make that correlation around stress, right? If you're if your heart rate is dropping and you're getting cortisol a level, your cortisol levels are going to go down. Like your inflammation is going to go. It's like, it's a ripple effect. And that is the key to biohacking. It's like, you can't just say, I just want to fix one thing. It's really this cavalcade of so many things that are all interconnected in our body. So mm -hmm. you say you want to fix your skin. Well, guess what? You've got to start with your sleep. You've got to start with eating healthy. You've got to cut that sugar and that bad oil out. Like there, everything is connected. And I think we are so limiting in our beliefs to think that just it's one thing we want to fix. And that is very much like 
the Western medical system. You know, I hate to yeah. say it, but. Katie, did, did you ever uh, consider studying naturopathy at all? Never, never. I was like, you know, I wanted, I studied English and I was like, if I don't become a, you know, famous journalist on the news, I'm going to be an English professor. Like I was such a book nerd growing up. This never crossed my mind and probably wouldn't if I didn't have an issue that I was trying to solve for myself, because I could totally see myself just being on the standard American diet for the rest of my life, like my family, don't tell them, I hope they're not listening. Uh, but you know, like that has been my culture. That was how I was raised. I was like Wheaties for breakfast, like everything you can possibly imagine that we did wrong was like, we did wrong, like TV right before you go to bed. And I had to unlearn all these things because I started to get sick. I started to realize like my body was not functioning right. My brain was starting to just dissipate and I was way too young for that to happen. And I just was feeling horrible. And there's just something about the psychology of like, I just feel so bad and there's nothing I, I feel like I'm doing right now in my life to be able to fix that. And that's when I started to take control of all these different modalities. And it has been a lot of work. It's been so, and I, even though I don't have a naturopathic degree and I don't have a law degree and I don't have a biology degree, like two things, I have done a ton of research for my channel and I am so ecstatic to like read PubMed. I know it sounds super nerdy, but like I get joy in like actually diving into the data on like magnometers and you know, crazy frequencies. And two, I've got a lot of friends in the space. You know, you're now one of them that I'm going to rely on for new tropics. You know, Rachel is my skin expert. I have a friend who's a physicist, a biologist, a lawyer, like surround yourself with a community of people that are going yep. to lift you up and teach you when you can't understand the facts yourself. And really community is like the key to longevity, right? Yep. Like if you don't have a stable, like ground of people who are there for you and they're going to help you, that's, that's when you start to run into some of these issues later in life. So that's kind of my big takeaway. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, it's a good, it's a good message and it's so relevant right now, given the fact that, well, well, most of us were in lockdown, you know, and we can clearly see the impact that that had on people's mental health. Like mm -hmm. without, like, honestly, without some of the, the biohacks and like the walking treadmill desk that I got at the start of lockdown and some of the supplements I, I jumped onto and things like that. I think, you know, lockdown, my brother came in, he's like, it's like three months into lockdown. He's like, he's like, bro, you're not even, you're not even upset. You're not even affected. I'm like, he came in. He's like, are you even being affected by this? I'm like, to be honest, bro, like not really. Like I've just, you know, well, that's probably because. We yeah. We started a podcast. I like my YouTube channel blew up. Like my fiance and I are like in the best state of our lives right now because we're both working together from home. Like yeah. we, we feel bad because obviously a lot of people have been impacted negatively, but it is a lot of it is also mentality and it's like, yes, you can sulk and you can be like, this is terrible. I can't go out and do the, all the social things and go to a bar and all that stuff. But like, if you can focus on like, what are your actual goals and what do you really want to strive for and hone in on that, that is when you can actually start to achieve the, like some of the success and make the most out of your time at home. Right. I would love to share my clinical experience because I work with clients, right? We were only shut down for a couple of months and then I have been continuing to work with clients and also online. And there are definitely some people that are thriving. And I'm going to tell you about these people. These are these people who, again, typically are 60 plus and have learned to cultivate their body, mind, spirit, energy practices. Mm. One of the takeaways that my hubby and I talked about, he's, he said, I want to have something to show for this time. I thought that was really great. And also I actually took this time to really go within and do a lot of deep inner psychological work. We're basically in these bubbles and uh, there's a regular psychologist that I'll have on the show, Leslie Miranda, talking about how we can take advantage of these times in these bubbles to really work on ourselves. And I'll tell you that those people that are doing that deep dive on all of those different levels that I talked about are doing really well. And in fact, they are the ones supporting, for example, their kids who have young kids in them navigating 
things. So I've, I've seen kind of the two different spectrums and my advice to you all <laughs> listening and tuning in is, you know, number one, you're on the right track tuning into the show, <laughs> but really take the time to do the deep inner work. Your future self will thank you in the process. You're going to get huge hits of creativity <laughs> and again, really care for, for your, your mental health, which is really key. Yeah. Um, that, that one, that final message of, you know, doing that inner work, um, I was having this chat yesterday, uh, about whenever I do open up that can of worms, like going back to past childhood traumas and, you know, part, part of my story is that the reason why I'm doing what I do today is because I, I didn't make it as a professional soccer player. For, so for me, that's like, now I feel like I have to show people what I'm made of in a different area. And so maybe that's why I'm so I'm so motivated and so driven to just show people that I've still got something to offer the world. And now this is what I'm doing. But whenever I open up that can of worms, honestly, like it's almost like you go two, three steps back because it, it, it sets me back. It honestly, like if I open up the can of worms or I think you need to stop saying that. Maybe that will just like, hmm. Otherwise, you're just going to keep perpetuating it. And I think it's important that we catch ourselves. It's like, oh, you know, I've always had bad skin or I'm acne prone. You're going to perpetuate that. There's a lot of strength in this. This is like the woo of um, our optimization of like through this experience. So really catch yourself. I, I encourage you to do that, mm-hmm. but also to actually work with experts in the space of psychological development is, is really powerful. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely top priority. As soon as my university is finished, like next couple of weeks, it's top priority. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, I think just j- jumping off of Rachel's point there, it's like, yes, that's your identity. Like in James Clear's book, he talks all about how to rephrase certain things. Like mm. I am not, I'm not, I'm an ex smoker, you know, versus like, oh, I'm trying to quit. Right. Like you, once you start to make these certain associations, uh, another trick, uh, you know, I mean, I have a laundry list and I'm just going to give you some unsolicited advice, but I have a friend who actually does hypnotic therapy on himself. So if he's going through a problem, he actually records like a hypnotic track and then listens uh-huh. to it as he's going to bed to help him kind of break through that. There's also the like burn and release, um, ceremony where, and I'm actually in the process of doing that where you actually take out all of your fears and so i actually have a lot of fear about talking about money um, on my channel because i am so adamant about like ethics and you know the transparency and so talking about any type of affiliate marketing has really yeah. been a struggle for me so rachel actually gave me this great advice of like write down your fears and burn them and that's a reminder that like you can get past those things you know it's, it's so much is in your head yeah. And, um, and I think when you really start to lead with your, your heart and your senses, like you're going to be able to break some ground. And also for any listeners watching, you can see that we do practice what we preach. The lights have gone to red. It's that time. It's the red light time. <laughs> this is our indication that this is a biohacker's home, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually really funny that you said that because we'll have our our red light going for my hubby and I, and he was using it one night and I came home and it was pitch black out. And it's like, oh, okay. People either think they're in Amsterdam or <laughs> they don't know what's going on. But I feel like the red light out of your room to people walking by, that's like the universal sign of, you know, they would they know what's up. Yeah. That's the biohacker family over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's too good too good all right well was there anything else um uh, rachel or katie let's sort of maybe wrap it up with maybe your favorite i guess what's your favorite um takeaway for my listeners or single takeaway to give them just to empower them with you know um, good vibes or you know positive energy what's something that you can yeah i guess share with them katie you go first <laughs> Okay. Um, I have a couple of things, but I'll try to compact them together. I think you're never too late to get started on taking care of your health is number one, like whatever age bracket you're in, this is the right time. And 
always go into everything with an open mind and a, and a sense of skepticism too, because sometimes, <laughs> as I've learned from experience, if something is too good to be true, it might just be, and sometimes it's gonna take a lot of hard work and perseverance on your end to be able to make uh, that life change or that habit change stick. And, and third, you know, for me, I struggled a lot in my career. I bounced between a lot of jobs and I started into the YouTube space at a very undesirable time when it was like, you know, so much competition and through creativity and love and drive and support from people who love me, I've been able to start to grow that. And so really, if it is in your power and in your like, your desire to like do something amazing and creative, find that creativity niche niche for you. It doesn't have to be a YouTube channel, but maybe start a podcast, think about a book, start a blog. Doing something creative every day stimulates you in a way that always has a huge ROI. And so mm -hmm. I just say, get that, get whatever you are good at out there in the world in a way that you're gonna enjoy the process. <laughs> Awesome. Rachel, back to you. <laughs> Love it. I'll add to your lens of creativity. Um, I've grown up playing guitar since I was 10. So I'll rock out on, you know, the Gibson Les Paul or Fender Strat. I'll do some Pink Floyd stuff or Dire Straits, Mark Knopfler. That's how I really kind of get out of that high beta and really kind of into that nice creative space. And then also getting out in nature, staying grounded, you know, acknowledging the beauty. So this is one thing that I want to leave you all with is just start to actually notice the beauty around you. You will start to notice that your entire mindset and the way that you navigate things will start to change if you just look for the beauty and also start to notice those who you interact with who you just like are magnetized to them. It's like, what is that? I truly believe that that is actually something called radiance, which is kind of what I feel like my life's mission is. So get outside, get creative, maybe rock out. Uh, if that's not your thing, play piano, do some artwork, but, but really do something that allows you to get creative instead of trying to occupy yourself and pass time on, on your phone, have a fire in your backyard, go to the beach, have a fire, right? Get back to basics, earth, fire, water, wind, minerals around us. We're so connected to mm. each and every one of us. We understand this Higgs boson particle theory, um, you know, the collider all this, by the way, CERN's firing up this year. Again, this is a big deal. What's so, that? Sorry? It's only the largest thing humanity's ever made. It's the Large Hadron Collider. It's a inter-country, international effort to basically fill in the gaps in physics. Okay, nerd Rachel alert. But there are gaps in our physics model that, you know, this is why they built it, to basically fill in the model and, and make discoveries with how, you know, different elements interact with one another. So Honestly, I think because of that, it hasn't been up and running for a while. They've been doing upgrades. I think we're actually going to learn some pretty sweet stuff because when we understood the Higgs boson field, that everything is literally connected. Uh, there's really a TED talk on this called, you know, universe on a knife's edge. It's a really good, really good talk, but we are so incredibly connected, you know, here to one side of the universe at a flash that that network, that field that's between each and every atom and particle and some particle looks just like a neural web. And I think we're going to start to learn more about that with consciousness and the impacts with health community. You know, when we do something to impact ourselves and our health, it impacts others. It's like what we do to ourselves is pretty much the same as doing stuff to other people. And and vice versa. So don't forget that we're all wonderfully made. We have this beautiful, you know, human vessels. Let's just continue to enjoy this beautiful planet and take care of it and ourselves and others in the process. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, some really powerful messages from both of you. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up. Rachel and Katie, I'm going to give my listeners a chance to check out your stuff. So where can they find more of your services? Where can they hunt you down online? Like just Fill them in. 
Everybody head over to beauty and bio beauty and the biohacker.com. Check out our podcast, beauty and the biohacker, subscribe to it. Uh, from there, you can kind of see what Katie and I both do, but yeah, we do a lot of work together. So, you know, Katie continues, you continue to do your investigation with biohack biohacking technologies. And I continue to focus on like the skin health optimization, um, you know, the, kind of the woo of beauty and all that. And then we come together in beauty and the biohacker and we just kind of share what we find with all of you through wonderful, beautiful conversations. Awesome. Cool. Katie, any, any final words at all? Anything? Oh, this has just been such a pleasure. And I, I have to say, like, I'm just, I'm so thankful and excited uh, to connect together in this community, because this is really what it's all about. You know, Rachel yep. mentioned surrounding yourself with people that you feel magnetized to energize, you know, the same thing could be said about the people you shouldn't attract yourself to. And, you know, yeah. it's like that, that energy really kind of getting dialed into the people that lift you up, that make you think differently, that, you know, really help you get into that kind of flow state and creativity zone. So I'm just so thrilled to have the opportunity to kind of sit around this table with all of you guys and share some really, you know, what I hope will be important messages of, of self-care and just taking, you know, a really keen look at your long-term health and know that you can change it no matter where you are and no matter what time. So yeah, thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to yet another episode of the Boost Your Biology podcast. All of the show notes will be linked. This podcast will go on YouTube and please share it around. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Rach. Cheers. Thank you everyone for joining in to today's episode. Visit nofilter.media forward slash boost your biology. This has been a No Filter Media production. Say what you want.